Now that everyone's made their way from downstairs upstairs, I'm going to call to order the workshop session. The first item on the workshop agenda is the swearing-in of Chuck Williamson, who was appointed to fill the remaining term of Gordon Nelson. Chuck, if you'll join me in the middle. Our usual housekeeping items, those of you who are safely seated more than six feet away from the person next to you, you may remove your mask now if you so wish. For those of you watching at home, if you wish to call in, the phone number is 512-556-0332. The next item on the workshop agenda is discussion and updates related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Can we hear? Are we good on this? Uh, I've got good news as far as it relates to COVID. Uh, the recent severe weather has created a significant drop in the numbers across Texas. There's been much discussion regarding the major uh, this matter, and the majority feel that we are, once it gets good weather again, it will see another increase in the spike. Uh, I'll detail some more information later on uh, that kind of leans to the thing of, I think the true numbers here are the hospitalizations that we're seeing. Uh, right now, the city of Lampasas is down to actually three in the hospital. I think if, if we were having the serious cases like we have been having, we would have more than three. We've been up around eight, nine, ten the majority of the time, so we've seen dramatic decrease in that. Uh, state of Texas currently has 202,748. This is down from 333,000. So you've seen that significant drop just in a two-week time. We did have good weather before last week, uh, but we, we continue to go down in the, the matter of cases. Uh, the number of fatalities now in the state of Texas is 41,407. Total cases for Lamb Passes County is now at uh, 2017. This is only an increase of 107 since the last time that we met. At this time, our total number of cases uh, two weeks ago was 1910. So we, you can see that we have not put together that much in this, in this slower time. Uh, we did have another fatality this week that is uh, obviously unfortunate. We now have 25 fatalities. The numbers that I have are from Friday night, the most recent for Lamb Passes County. Uh, that's the 25 fatalities. We have, let's see, active cases, I believe is 26. And in the hospital, we have three. So uh, good news to report, hospitalizations across Texas are on a steady decline. On February, 20, on February 8th, we had uh, 9,401 cases. And now we currently have 6,964 cases. So all across the state, we've seen a significant decrease. If you go back to January 19th, we had 13,870. That's why I say as far as the hospitalizations that we have across the state, it's been a steady decline. Those numbers continue to go down. And I think that's probably the better number to, to measure this by, the hospitalizations on that. So we've been in a steady decline since January 19th as far as that goes. Uh, right now, if you actually look at the different trauma service areas, there are only two 
that are up above that 15% number that they're looking at. If you have greater than 15%, you're, you're limited to 50% occupancy. And across the state, with the exception of two different areas, it's below, it's below that 15%. Some good news that I have as far as vaccines, beginning in March, the County of Lampasas will begin receiving vaccines from several different sources. Yes, pretty happy about that. Uh, this should provide close to 300 vaccines per week. We were getting 200 vaccines from Bell County. Uh, another group has come in that we're going to have probably 100 vaccines a week. It may not be exactly 300. It may be just a little bit less than that, but we should have around 300 vaccines each week. The key to this is we have to be able to give those vaccines each time. We can't drop off during that week. Uh, as soon as I have the information as far as who is going to be able to deliver those vaccinations, how they're going to sign up, how they're going to register patients. I'll be sure and push that out through the different social media platforms and also through uh, the newspaper and through the radiogram around here. That's all that I have at this time. Does anybody have any questions as far as any of those? Yes, sir. I was just curious what the two counties or the areas were that are above 15%, uh, if counties you remember. That are above 15% are going to be Laredo and El Paso. That's, that's those trauma service areas. There's actually a couple of different counties in each one of them. I don't have the ability to research each particular county, but those are the that's, those That's are the two exactly what I was curious about. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Yeah. Next item is discussion regarding amendments to personnel policy. Good evening, Mayor Council. Can y'all hear me? So this is on our agenda tonight for discussion for our proposed um, amendment to the current personnel policy. Um, we've got, uh, we'd like to amend on longevity pay. Um, we'd like to add in for those that are. Um, Vicki, I think they're struggling to hear I'm you. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So um, the introductory period. Um, longevity pay and then the use of um, accrued leave for on-the-job injuries to work, I'm sorry, to supplement uh, workers' comp payments. So under the um, introductory period currently, um, we would like to add in there for promoted and transferred employees um, that they serve the six-month introductory period, but they are allowed to uh, use their accrued time and also to continue to accrue time. And then um, for longevity pay, uh, we would like to add in there for the ones that are uh, 25 to 29 years, $1,000. And then from um, 30 years or more, $1,200. And then for, um, Sorry, give me a second here. And then on page 13 of your packet, it has, we would like to, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <better. laughs> to allow for, um, if someone's injured on the job, to allow them to be able to utilize their accrued time, their sick time, their vacation leave, personal business day, comp time, whatever, to help supplement their um, workers comp is there any questions or comments I think council will recall we've discussed all this in a previous workshop but if you have any questions for an action item please speak up now oh. good. looks good appreciate staff's work on this thank you thank you Vicki item number five discussion relating to partitions at dais Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this item is something relatively new. Um, Monica Wright and I, the IT director, have been discussing better utilization of the dais and all of the equipment that we have up here. And we found with the audio and the, and the video that we have to do going forward that we tend to talk away from the microphone and then we're not able to use the, the podium like it's intended to. So what we want to do is try to look at getting some but he can give us some estimates on getting a petition put up so that all of the council can be back at the dais like they're supposed to be, but have it to where it's not going to take away from the integrity of the dais, something that's more temporary with brackets that we can keep there as long as we need it, but can be removed and it won't leave a mark. 
So that's kind of what I kind of want to kind of work on and see if we can do it. Because just like the podium itself, we would like to have the podium back over here where we can use the microphone. Because this is really meant for audience members, not for us to present. And then with them talking into their mics, they're sideways, so we can't always hear it very well. So we're just trying to see what we can do to better utilize the area. I'm going to be honest with you. My initial concern with that is we already have a hard enough time hearing each other. If we're going to put up dividers between each other, I'm, I think that's going to exacerbate the issue for us. I have a hard time hearing council members at the dais as it is, even on the microphones we have. So and you, you can't see them as well. You, I mean, you have to lean forward to see who's saying what. But I think this will kind of force the issue to make people speak into the mic, and that way everybody can be able to hear everybody. Because, I mean, even with y'all, it's hit and miss. I mean, it really truly is. And I love all of y'all, and I can hear y'all fine, but when we're trying to go back and listen to things, it's very hard to take in everybody's audio. You know, it's, it's very difficult. And especially being like this, I mean, like I said, we can't even use our podium or the mics, because they're not made to be moved around the way that they are. They're supposed to be at specific locations. And so we're kind of not using the equipment the way that it was actually intended to be used. So it's just, just something to think about. I just know when I was down on this end, I had a very hard time hearing anybody speak on this other end. And I had asked Mona about, Monica about the uh, uh, availability of some kind of speakers or monitors or something in the back that we could we could hear for it through, and I don't know how that. We can definitely look into that. Um, we can probably do um, some modifications to like the zoning areas of the output of the speakers, um, and we can also look at um, alternatives possibly for uh, behind the dais so that you guys can hear better. Um, I'll definitely check into that. Is there a volume or a sensitivity issue in terms of microphones? I mean, well, the, the problem is, is that everybody speaks into their mic differently. Um, obviously, some members, like uh, Becky said, if you speak correctly into it, you can hear it very loud. And others don't speak directly into the mic. So all the mics are adjusted to the same uh, volume. It's just yeah, as to how you speak into them. I just don't want to do anything that diminishes it worse than it already is. And I don't want to do anything that costs a lot of money either, but especially not knowing how long it's going to last. Do we need to have a workshop on how to speak into a microphone? <laughs> and I, I think also too, because um, obviously there's not carpet in here. There's a lot of sound that bounces off of the windows. There's no window treatments. There's no... Um, very loud air conditioning unit. The acoustics are bounce, you know, they do bounce quite a bit. Um, I do think we could look into looking, uh, look into uh, modifying the zoning of how the speakers come out. But if we did put up those partitions, we could probably um, adjust the volume and make it higher. I'm hesitant to do the partitions at this moment because it just seems like a waste of money. Maybe we just need to practice with the mics. Gentlemen, no opinions? Just sitting from down here, it's hard, at least for me, to keep up with where you all are even seeing you. Not that Bob's a big Mike. barrier to that, but he is. Sorry. That's See, I'm doing exactly right the same thing you said not to do, is speak into the mic and not look at you all to speak to you. I'm not just not used to that. But the microphone, if the microphone is underneath your mouth, I promise they don't, they, does anybody have a hard time hearing me ever? I do speak loudly, but keep, if you practice on keeping the microphone under your mouth, I think it helps things better. I do think that the issue of presentation is a bigger problem for me. Y'all haven't, nobody has mastered the art of speaking into the microphone and holding paperwork when that's a handheld mic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping at some point uh, Zach in the back row might have some input on what's the best way to utilize a microphone. Please step forward and share with us. Or at least I was thinking, I don't, I don't know. So what about like lapel mics or something? Because those, there's little receivers you can probably just plug into these hard wires and that might be able to pick up there's multi-directional rather than just like one direction on these mics. 
And then if there's any trouble, anyone hearing, like council members, I mean, any ear monitors are pretty easy to set up. I mean, that might help too a little bit, rather than getting a whole new system behind y'all. Is that something that you think we can look into, is lapel mics and earpieces for those that need it? I can look into it. But I don't know how much they cost, so. Well, we always look first, so thank you. Does any council member wish for Becky and staff to get a quote on partitions? There's an action item later, y'all can, this just works out. I just want to be sure we push the, they speak up now, so. Thank you, ma'am. Item number six, discussion and update related to electric service disruptions and winter storm event. Mayor and Council, we wanted to, uh, th this obviously is an event that is ongoing, that we're, uh, is not over. Uh, we're not so uh, presumptuous to bring you a presentation tonight that uh, attempts to answer all the questions and come up with a recommendation, but we do want to, through this item, uh, express to you the importance that staff feels about doing a very thorough after action uh, review of the incidents. Uh, areas that uh, we did well in, areas that we need to improve in, other areas that we may need to make investment in. Uh, I can't tell you how unprecedented this event was in terms of the scope and the impacts to our citizens uh, as well as citizens across the state of Texas. This is a starting point. Um, it is um, it, it provides a format, perhaps, that we'd like council to provide input on in terms of how we look at this event, uh, as well as uh, seek your input along the way. In terms of the timeline, um, we received, you know, began to push out weather alerts, uh, I believe it was around uh, the 11th, 12th of February, public communication on February 13th, that was uh, the press release that was pushed out. And then uh, very obviously we had the event beginning about two in the morning on February 14th in terms of electric uh, disruption. Uh, because of the electric disruption, not only uh, in Lampasas and in the, Earth, uh, in the uh, LCRA system, uh, because of disruption through the Bartlett system, we lost, uh, uh, had intermittent uh, pumping uh, from our suppliers to the east. Uh, which resulted in low flows and loss of water pressure uh, beginning probably early afternoon on February 15th through, uh, I would say, a, approximately 12, maybe a few more hours than that to get some water pressure back. It wasn't, it wasn't fully uh, back at that time. In terms of remaining issues and, and certainly what we want to uh, get your input on, uh, water capacity, and you know, I'm, I'm pleased to report, I talked to Van this afternoon, uh, the Donnell tank is now completely full. That tank is kind of a, an important uh, marker for us to be able to start pushing more water to Georgetown. Georgetown, uh, not you know, there there have been times that we've run Georgetown really with no little or no water in it. Uh, so it's uh, not necessarily uh, critical, but certainly to bring back in the 100% of the capacity, we want water in that Georgetown tank, not only for us but for uh, Kempner members as well. Um, the other, you know, the item, the trash recovery, that has gone slow. I do know they had some extra resources, and I think that's been a, a frustrating point for our citizens. I think uh, we sure wish we, they could have come in Saturday, Sunday, uh, and at least put a dent in it, uh, but that's something that we anticipate will be fully recovered, hopefully by, by the end of the week. Uh, there are a lot of uh, individuals that have been impacted in terms of burst pipes and, and uh, problems with their houses. Uh, some of these have gotten, you know, the pipes fixed, but that's just the beginning in terms of the repairs that they're going to see. Um, and I, I did not get a number, but I do know that uh, uh, Tom and Junior ran, uh, ran pretty much all day, 15th, 16th, turning services off. They even ran a few, I think, on Saturday, turning services off where people needed to repair pipes. The other item that I think is of primary concern to our residents and to council is rate stabilization and what is going on with our rates. Um, and I'm, I'm uh, pleased in one hand to report to you that 
you know, the, our, our contracts uh, currently have fixed pricing. So uh, the pricing from our wholesale suppliers per kilowatt uh, will not change. Um, we will see some increases in what we call the congestion and ancillary charges. Uh, however, it would be staff's uh, opinion and, and we would look for council's uh, input on this, the temporary spike on those charges. Uh, let me paint a picture. Um, we, there are a lot of systems that have volume contracts. They get to a certain volume of kilowatts, that's what they buy month in, month out, and usually that's plenty. When it gets to be zero degrees, they buy more than what their volume is, and they had to buy volumes that, you know, for megawatts that were anywhere from $7,500 to $9,000. If you were in a variable rate contract, a rate that follows the market, pretty disastrous. Um, the, the, the exposure that we have is not necessarily to the cost per kilowatt because one of our, one of our suppliers, um, our cost of electricity uh, through uh, February 14th was about $36,000. Had that been a market rate, it would have been $703,000. I but, was, I, can I pl just interrupt you for a minute because yes. it's important for the people in this room and the people watching at home to know the position that we are in in terms of the utility rates we pay is accredited to one person, one person only, and his name is Finley de Graffenried. And every single person in this room and every single person in this community needs to understand that our risk has been mitigated by his ability to broker deals for us that have secured us not knowing that something like this would happen but in the event that it has, we come out on top. So I understand there is panic. I understand that there is concern about some of the costs that we cannot control. But when it comes to utility rates, that's who you think right there. You may resume with your presentation. Uh, Mayor, we're, we're, you know, we are financially uh, healthy. Our electric department does. Uh, carry adequate reserves to overcome the, the temporary spike in congestion and other ancillary charges. And I think uh, we'd, we'd certainly be interested in council's input. Uh, I, I think this is, this is a bump that we just uh, absorb because we are healthy financially. Uh, certainly the, the impact uh, compared to the impacts of a lot of other customers in Texas and a lot of other systems is pretty negligible. But we are going to get a little spike, in, in the, uh, but we certainly are in a position to absorb that if council so chooses. I would like to look at ways for the city to absorb the cost instead of passing it on. We're able to do that if, if that's the direction from council. Yeah. If, if anyone feels any differently during a workshop session, you need to voice your opinion. It's not, a, not an action item. No, I, I agree with your statement, but I would like to ask that uh, when they do their evaluations, the staff, that they look at their maintenance budgets. Obviously, with the line breaks and the roads are coming all to pieces, right. uh, we may be stretching the budget a little bit in those areas. Absolutely. Um, very well. We'll, uh, uh, Mayor and Council, we'll push something out to the public this evening that rates will not uh, change as a result of this or any temporary spikes that we may see on the ancillary or congestion charges. Yeah. So the, uh, the, the addition, in some of these slides, some of these bullet points are a little redundant, I apologize. I was sleepy when I was putting it together, but um, the, the issues, we don't know what all the issues are yet. So we've got to do some digging and, and make sure that uh, we come up with that. Service disparity was a big uh, issue, I think, for our customers. And it's not only a disparity if you were on the hospital feed or, or not in the city of Lampasas, but, you know, the city of Burnett, because they have one sub, they were, and, and that sub was on the hospital feed, you know, they didn't go out. They closed City Hall all week, but they never lost electricity. There was not, hands down, there was not an equitable distribution of power to the state of Texas and the residents that live in it. Correct. And, you know, uh, Austin Energy, and again, they had some other issues with damages, but uh, 
and, and then we heard from people in North Texas, some people in PEC had uh, relatively short time frames and some of them were out for days. So there, there are ways to get at that service disparity that we've already talked with LCRA about, uh, which would be a little more precise management of the load. It would mean in certain circumstances maybe turning that precise management of the load over to LCRA. Uh, they, they turn on and off their transformers. They don't really touch our breakers, which is at the point, the delineation to what we own versus what they own. So there, I think there's ways that we can improve that, not only in Lampasas, but think about if we were able to share that load, that, that, those outages with Burnett, Llano, and other smaller communities. Um, I, think, I think maybe that pain wouldn't have been so bad uh, for folks. Rate risk management, I think that's something we always continue to look at. Um, if you had a market... If you had a market rate, that would probably save you 25 to 50 cents a meg. And you would get some advantage off of that. You'd save the 25 or 50 cents a meg, but it's not worth it for us. We don't have the capacity to manage that load. We don't, uh, we don't have 10 people sitting in a dispatch room that can look at different offers from different uh, providers. So I think we continue to look at ways to manage our rate or to, to, to provide rate ri risk management. I think issues, you know, capacity to, to deliver services. How did we coordinate? How did we uh, uh, work with those community service organizations, the churches? Some of some folks stepped up big, and I can't say enough about uh, St. Mary's, uh, the Salvation Army. Uh, there were other entities that reached out and provided food, uh, and, and those needs ran errands for people that could not get out or were stuck. Um, Health care needs, you know, What's our capacity? How do we deal with oxygen and things like that? Well, a lot of times they would have to run to the hospital. Once that wasn't really an option, you know, it was, it was EMS. And then, like I said, integrating community services. I think the partners that we need to, to look at, um, I think, I think uh, county interface, emergency management, commissioners, SO, I think we work very closely with some, some of the commissioners, uh, with the SO, uh, judge, Emergency medical services, that's, that's a partner in our assessment. Rollinsbrook, uh, Salvation Army, Ministerial Alliance. Uh, LCRA and, and Lowell and I talk every night probably. This is after we've talked three or four times during the day with him and Alan Coonsy. What are you seeing? What's coming online? Uh, how's, why is, why is the forecast now gone to this? Well, okay plant tripped off. Anyway, so those, those guys were uh, very helpful. Like I said, we talked multiple times a day, and usually we ended up about 9 or 10 o'clock at night talking. Uh, we also need to talk with other wholesale electric providers. I think the Rates and Resource Council, which is the wholesale uh, customers for LCRA, and basically just talking to our peer cities. Uh, the other thing that I th think is very important in our assessment is we need to uh, create the opportunity for residents to give us input. Um, their perception is real. Their, their, their concerns are real. We've, we've got to understand exactly what we could have done better and how we could have served our community I think there better. are so many different experiences for, some, for everybody involved that if we don't listen to everybody, we're not being inclusive of Absolutely. our entire community. So I, I think, and that may take a little time to, to put together, but... Um, I think, I, I mean, whether it's a town hall meeting or however we want to do it, it's, uh, I think it's important to hear from, from folks. And, and there were some frustrated people, and I, I don't blame them. You know, we want to include, uh, in terms of, you know, I'd, I've asked the uh, assistant city manager, fire chief, police chief, we'll also include Mandy in that group to take some leadership in this, in developing this. Um, and, and maybe just at this time, I don't know if... Uh, uh, Chief Smith, uh, Ricky, if you'd want to touch on anything. Mayor mayor and council. Yeah, I've already met with some of my staff. I can see some little things we need to do just to IT-wise. I've talked to Monica and them today about, you know, we need some technology out in the field. It, it killed us with the water. 
Man, we couldn't keep up with anything. We didn't know what was going on here, what was going on there. We had to always have somebody at the wastewater building to monitor and relay to it by phone. You know, we need to get a pad in our hand and work from the field because we don't have the staff to leave somebody just sitting there. But the staff did amazing, amazing, because this was unbelievable conditions to work in. Y'all you know what it was like. My power was going on and off. I know the mayor's was because we were on the same thing. And, and, and it was miserable, but we had to live with it. But we did see some weaknesses we need to improve on, some things we will bring to y'all to ask for help that hopefully is not much money yet. Some of it's already budgeted, but some of it's, you know, the electric. I mean, we just had some loaded transformers. We, it, it really wasn't bad for us other than the rolling blackouts. We had maybe four or five outages. And it was just some weak, weak points that showed up in this. I mean, it's one degrees. Uh, but overall, like I said, the streets did a lot of sanding. Electric did a lot of going on calls and dealing with checking up on people. And like I said, water had all those breaks and dealing with the water from Kempner. But I want you all to know how hard they worked. And the staff, all the staff was always out. We, we know how hard they work. We want you to make sure they know how much we appreciate it. I sure will. And there will always be those who have complaints and issues. Mm -hmm. If you feel those, you direct them to me. Because I will staunchly defend the performance of every member of the city staff and what just happened last week. Because hands down, with no experience in situations like this, we kicked butt. We and really if anybody did. anybody has a problem with it, they can come to me. We really did kick butt. Think about what we just went through, and we did okay. Thank y'all. I think looking at it from an emergency management perspective, we'll sit down afterwards and review what went well, what didn't go well, uh, learn from mistakes, and put things together to, to plan ahead for next time. Also on that, we've sent out some of the stuff, the, the government, the state government is wanting everybody, regardless of where you're at, what you did have, they want you to do your own individual damage assessment. Right now we currently have public assistance in the state of Texas. We're trying to get individual assistance in the state of Texas. It may not seem like a lot. It's typically around $4,000, $6,000 per family that gets that individual assessment depending on what they have. But it's a matter of collecting data and they've got some stuff put together to collect that data. But it does cover you up to $36,000 on a structure and $36,000 on other stuff. So it can be more depending on what you've lost. Uh, it, it helps you if you're underinsured or don't have any insurance whatsoever. So that's stuff that we're still working on. Like the city manager said, this. Is, this event's not over because it's 70 degrees and nice. Uh, I, I get to put this right there with some other stuff I've been working on, like COVID. So, uh, you know, I think everybody did pretty well all the way around through it, and I think that it was a it was a good coming together of all the different departments working through it and everything. So, there's obviously the review to go through and and make sure that we can improve for next time, and hopefully, there's not a next time. Mayor Council, I can't say enough about the city departments and the state departments also. TxDOT did an outstanding job. If you uh, happen to go outside of Lampasas into uh, other districts, we were sit definitely taken care of. Um, your city manager was there the entire time. He said like three phone calls. He was on the phone all the time talking to someone, trying to... <coughs> get things going back faster and get things taken care of as quick as he could. Um, as far as the community, pick up the phone and you say this is the resource that we need and people were providing it. You know, what's in a grid by the hospital that we can have opened up? And the Catholic Church was opened up. You know, what can we do for this? And it just call someone here in town and it happened. So when we do our assessment, that will be a big part of our community resources when we talk about that. Thank you. Uh -huh. so this was absolutely a case of Lampasas taking care of Lampasas. Absolutely. So. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
I want to make a quick shout out to the water department because we were able to have school because they got that boil notice lifted faster than most of the people around us. <laughs> Y'all did good. I do, I do think the idea of a town hall is probably good. I think we first need to have a, maybe a stakeholders roundtable. Sure. Assess absolutely. where we were together and then bring the community in so that we can be responsive to their concerns going forward. Absolutely. And thank you for keeping us informed. You bet. You bet. I told, uh, I told Councilman Clark, uh, uh, Missy and I looked at each other and said, well, let's go home. <laughs> We were up in Dallas and uh, decided we needed to scoot back. Um, so the, the other folks that we need to make sure we include, obviously, the IT department, our utility staff, human resources, what are the training needs, how do we access those trainings. Uh, as part of that stakeholder group, the Salvation Army, Ministerial Alliance, county officials, uh, public hearing, town hall, and then we also want to do some outreach, and I think Mandy is a uh, uh, going to take that on in terms of business and impacts to business. One of the things that, um, you, you know, is de you know hurtful to the businesses, but perhaps helped us in terms of water use and, and things like that. But uh, uh, you know, because of natural gas curtailment, you know, a lot, of, you know, Ajinomoto was shut down, you know, until tomorrow because uh, they don't have natural gas. But uh, and I think oil states, uh, for the same reasons, they were shut down. Not only do they have some repairs to make, but uh, anyway, we want to we get out and visit with those businesses and uh, see what sort of impacts or if there's anything that we can incorporate in our uh, assessment or uh, recommendations that would uh, address their concerns. Uh, time frame, I think we're, we'll put together a, a timeline. We want to interview and discuss with our partners. And that may be one meeting, that may be a two or three meetings. Try to uh, assess and, and inventory issues, make recommendations. And then uh, I, I'm thinking hopefully we can get this back to you in some format within four to six weeks. Certainly we're interested in your comments or anything that you think we've missed or if we want, want to make sure we include and, and uh, uh, value your input on that. If we look back at the days and times of telephone and internet outages that we experienced a few years ago, typically our feedback and involvement from the community was pretty high shortly thereafter when they were still feeling the after right. effects. Right. So if we're going to want community engagement, I think we need to do it pretty quickly while everybody's still cold and mad. We'll do that. Anything else? Staff? Thank you very much. Council. All right. Discussion regarding any item on the regular agenda. Does anyone wish to bring up anything we'll take up later in the agenda? Do I have a motion to adjourn workshop session? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Does anyone need a five-minute break, or can we roll right into regular session? Keep going. All right. At this time, we'll call to order the regular meeting of the governing body of the city of Lampasas. If you would all please rise at this time, and Chief Bailey, if you don't mind, leaning us in invocation. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift our prayers to you for all who are suffering. We don't always feel your presence or understand the path that you want each of us to take. But Father, you are, we know you're with us and that you, by that you provide us with hope. Father, this past cold weather taught us that there are many things that we just take for granted and that they can be taken from us in a cold snap. Many had provisions and many did not. Reminded me much of the ant and the grasshopper. And Father, we thank you for the blessed giving of the ants, for those that gathered and stored prior to the storm. Father, we thank you for the friends, the neighbors, those kind-hearted strangers, for all those that were there to restore us and to fix, our, fix things for us, Father. We thank you for the beautiful, warm summer weather days that you've given us after this. For many of us, there was uncertainty. For no, there was no heat, there was no electricity, no water, and for some, there was no food. Thank you for the helpers, the givers, and the fixers, Lord. 
Father, we thank you for these trials and we thank you for these paths because we know they restore us. We know that they give us hope for our future and they give us back our love for one another. Father, the here and now is our meeting and so we ask that you guide us, you direct us, and that you give us your wisdom to complete this meeting. Please say that all make, see that all make it home safely to their loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We don't have any presentations or proclamations this evening. We'll move into the public hearing and citizens' comments portion of the meeting. Item 1.1 is citizens' comments. Any citizen who desires to address the city council on a matter not included on the agenda may do so at this time. The city council may not deliberate on items presented under this agenda item. We do have one individual listed to speak. I'd like to give him the opportunity to come up first. That's going to be Clifford Dalton. Please remember, Mr. Dalton, that comments are limited to three minutes per individual. Council, thank you. Um, I want to say that please poison me, and uh, I'm not. I, I, have a, I have a problem with uh, my speech and everything. I have a problem with thinking, and I can't. I have Farr's disease. It's a uh, new disease that people that's on the, in the in hospitals and they don't know what it is. They try to they try to fix me up, and fix me up, and they can't fix me up. I'm telling you that they they poison me, people po poison me, and. Um, they poison me, and um, I, well, I'm thinking well, about the about the food here. The food is poison too, and uh, they poison me everywhere. Poison me at the franchises, franchises at at the purchase chicken. Poison me at the because I get drinks here and everything, and they poison me. I can't really talk that well, but I'm trying to talk my best to y'all, and um, I am. Um, well, I, I was thinking maybe uh, I just. I want to see that I was poisoned, and I want them to stop poisoning me. Truly, I want them to stop poisoning me. I know, I know. Everybody knows we get poisoned, don't you? Don't you? Do, do, do you know? Do you get poisoned? Poison? Poison in your system? You know when you get poisoned in your system? I know when to get poisoned in my system too. And I'm gonna tell you like it is. They poisoned me, and that's the truth. And um, the police department did it. Police department did it. And they might not sound good, but it's true. And um, I'm telling you that the that they, they, they oh, I, I just can't really talk that well. I can't think that well. I can't think, but I, I can know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. They poison me all the time, and all the time. Everywhere I go, it's poison me. Poison me in, in, the, in the stripes. They poison me at, at, the, uh, at the kitchens, and I also poison me at, the, at Burger King. They had a uh, camera up there on the, on the Burger King machine where they get drinks, and they, they, they see you when you get drinks. They see me and they put poison in my drink. They put poison by delivering to the to the um, to the fountain drinks and they poison with poison fountain drink. When I go up go up to get drinks, they poison me all the time. And I I can't can't believe it. They do they do me? They can't, they do it to me all the time. And I'm, just, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it all. And I've got I got brain problems and everything. And they poison me all the time. And they just want me to they want me to complain and make complaints and everything. They just want me to do things wrong, and I, don't, I just don't do it. I don't, I just, I just beat, by my, just beat myself, and I just, I, and my mom died and everything else. I lot of things, a lot of problems with my, with my life, and, 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 uh, and well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry for t talking. I'm sorry for saying, saying don't do that. I'm sorry for saying that, but the police poison me. I'm sick of poison me. I'll tell you like this. I'm, I'm just sick of everything. I'm sick of it all. They poison me all the time. And I'm telling y'all, because it's the truth. It's the truth. I'm trying to tell you it's the truth. I'm trying to tell y'all it's the truth. I'm telling you right to your face. It's true. It's true. And it's, they poison me all the time. So I'm sorry for saying, saying it to you. 
I'll let you go because I can't really talk that well. I'm trying to talk my best. I can't talk that well. You did just fine, okay. Mr. Dalton. Right, we you. appreciate you. Thank Please you. understand we're not allowed to comment on your um, what you brought forth to us, but okay. we appreciate you. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Is there any other citizens who wish to speak on an item that is not included on the agenda? Item 1.2, citizens' comments. Any citizen who desires to address the city council on a matter that is included on the agenda may do so at this time. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on an item that is on the agenda? Moving on to minutes. 2.1, discussion and possible action concerning approval of minutes of the regular meeting on February 8th, 2021. I saw no mistake. I move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Two abstentions, Mr. Williamson and Ms. Toops. 3.0 Consent Agenda. 3.1 Discussion of possible action regarding approval of the second reading of an ordinance for a specific use permit for property described as lot 19 and point eight two A four one nine O L two two Block B Lake Hill Estate Subdivision, commonly known as eight Chris James, Lampasas, Texas, Lampasas County to allow for an accessory dwelling in an area zoned single family residential 10 SF10. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. One, did you get that, Becky? Okay. 4.0, board and department reports. 4.1, city secretary monthly report. We just figured it'd be fair for you to have to do a monthly report shortly after being appointed city secretary. Mr. Worrell, can you hear me? All right. So I'm going to go through the City Secretary Administration Report for 2020. So there's been a lot of changes over the last year, but you can kind of follow through and I'll keep you abreast of what's new and different. So the City Administration Department, we have Christina Morez was the City Secretary. Myself was the Assistant City Secretary. Vicki Tower was the Assistant City Secretary up until March. And then we had Chastity Shiflett join our team, the Administrative Assistant. And she's actually here tonight. So she can say hi to her. <laughs> um, brief departmental responsibilities. This kind of gives you an overview of everything that we're responsible for. We have the human resources personnel, open records requests, records retention, the code of ordinances, resolutions, annexations, building permits, planning and zoning, um, TML, the city insurance and inventory, and then contracts, the city council packets, the budget books that we don't necessarily have anything to do with the budget, but we actually put them together for the different departments. Um, the solicitor vendor permits, the Pavilion Ruth Eakin Amphitheater Reservations, which Vicki now does under her new um, role, and then cemetery deeds, and then maintain the vehicle inspections and registrations. For administrative support, um, our team as a whole, we support LEDC, Parks and Rec Airport, Construction Board, Zoning Board, Planning and Zoning, the Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee, and Development Team Meetings. For 2020, we attended, created, took minutes for over 47 meetings, and that does not include City Council or my CPAC meetings. In March of 2020, Chastity Shiflett, Administrative Secretary, became the newest member of our team. At that time is when Vicki Tower took over her Park Secretary position. Um, so the Administrative Secretary, which is now Chastity, she wears multiple hats. Not only does she support the city manager, the city secretary, the building department, she also meets and greets customers, directs them where they need to go, along with the other <coughs> responsibilities listed below. So she does all the registrations. She did almost 82 vehicles for 2020, getting him um, inspected, making sure they got registration done on him. She completed and filed 39 cemetery deeds. Um, she completes departmental purchase orders. Um, the monthly newsletters now went to Vicki, but she supported um, IT department in doing those monthly newsletters that they put out, um, prepared the budget books, cross-training, and then we issue the building permits and schedule the inspections, and then assist in compiling data for open records request. So for 2020, we did 53 requests for open records. So my position at the time was the city secretary. I supported the building department, um, the city council packets, planning and zoning, and then the zoning board packets as well. 
Um, this kind of gives you an overview of what I have to go through when I do the city council packets. Um, it's, it's a pretty um, long and lengthy ordeal. It starts tomorrow, the day after council is when I start for the next council meeting. And then I just gather all the data, compile the information, and get ready to be um, published. Planning and zoning and ZBA packets, they begin the date the application is received. So at that time, I research the request to see what they need to have done, what they want done. Then I go through and do a survey, description, maps, pictures, whatever information I can gather, either from the applicant or on my own accord. Newspaper publication, that's a deadline that has to be met. Normally, it's a 10-day, 15-day processing where I have to make sure it's published prior to the date of the meeting. Request for tax cards from the appraisal district. Again, I'm relying on them to give you back the information I need timely, so I have to be even more timely to request it to make sure I meet my deadlines. Um, send the certified letters, post public hearing, prepare the ordinance and staff reports, compile the packet, post the agenda, mail the packet out to not only my PNZ members, but also to you as well. And then we place the item on council for the approval of the ordinance at a later time. So while the building department does not necessarily fall under the city secretary administration umbrella, if you will, we do support it in all aspects. Um, for 2020, there were 860 building permits issued, and that is something that was handled either by myself, Vicki, or by Chastity. So that was up by 40 from 2019, and the reason I put that in there is because of COVID. So while we know that COVID impacted us, it didn't impact the building department. People were still building, they were still remodeling, they were doing honeydews, they were still very active in the community. Um, there was 12, 1,020 inspections that were conducted, which averaged about 85 per month. So that's what Frank does now um, with regards to him going out in the field. So he spends most of his day out in the field, and while Vicki or Chastity or myself would field all of the building type questions that would come in, you know, just over the phone, in person, we would handle all that for Frank on his behalf. And that kind of gives you a kind of an overview of what we do. I'm not gonna read it all to you, but you can kind of see, I mean, we just, like I said, filled all the questions that come in. And that can be anywhere from zoning questions, what they wanna build, how they wanna build it, setbacks, variances, whatever they wanna do, we try to accommodate. And then if it gets to a certain point, we'll set up a consultation with Frank so he can really discuss it, go on site, visit, whatever needs to be done that's kind of out of our realm. So in summary, this report is just to reflect on some of the items that we do on a daily basis. We are in constant go mode. We're skilled in multitasking and working hard to ensure deadlines are met. We are a resource to awe, and our day is not structured. We have to be flexible and willing to assist and change our focus at any moment. And do you have any questions? <laughs> uh, what's the timeline on looking for a replacement to fill the empty hole within that department? We, at this time, it's, it's not a necessity at this moment. Um, we're still looking at all of our different responsibilities, how we're going to define it, how we're going to structure the, the various departments. And once we decide on what the future is going to hold, then at that time we'll decide what we need to do, what gap we need to fill. Sounds good. Council, have any more questions? Okay. Thank you, Becky. 5.0, routine matters. 5.1, city manager's operational report. This is your shortest one ever. It is. I was a little distracted. <laughs> Campbell Park will continue to, to push for that, although we don't have any actionable items for you. We hope to have some actionable items uh, for you for the next agenda related to the uh, pavilion and skate park. Those items would be uh, the engagement of uh, uh, Langerman Foster for the geotech. Uh, we still have a little mapping to do on that regard. Comp plan, you've, you've basically gotten the rundown on that. Uh, we do plan to bring that to you, or hopefully a recommendation from Planning Commission to you on March 8th. And we also want to pat some staff on the back that were began their uh, City of Lampasas careers this February. Felicia Viejo, nine years. Uh, Captain Griner, seven years. Uh, Bessie White, six years. Lieutenant Montgomery, 19 years. Carlin Heiss, three years. Uh, Mandy Walsh, four years. Carlos Garcia, 17, and John Bowen with the PD, uh, two years. Thank you. I have, I have one question, if I may, uh, in regard. I had brought up to you the evaluation of the wastewater uh, study 
yes. on our interceptors. Uh, we're approaching the six months of our budget, and I would like to get uh, some feedback from you in regards to where we're going to stand on this budget. You bet. Uh, I know it's going to take a hit because of the snow and ice, uh, but I just wanted to also make sure this would be the time uh, for us to get started on the interceptor getting into the spring and summer months as far as the evaluation of that. You can put that as a report or either a workshop item on the next agenda. Uh, again, my, my concern is going to be West 3rd Street where we've got unbudgeted repairs there. I think we've got adequate uh, dollars in our street budget. Th this year we've actually budgeted uh, close to a million dollars for streets. Uh, so E, uh, e came in on target, we'll, but anyway, we'll put it on the next agenda. Okay. I just know this is a good time to begin this, the process. Thank you, Finley. Out of 5.2, Mayor's comments. I'm going to be pretty brief, probably sum it up by saying I could never imagine being more proud to be from Lampasas than I have been for the last week. Um, we've gotten away from something that I was very proud to be a affiliated with and that's the community champion award we kind of backed off on that because of covid bringing people into council chambers however uh, champion seems kind of like a weak word if we look at some of the things accomplished by our residents and business owners and community members over the last week so i am evaluating some possible ways to recognize that group um, there's not a way for me to have I'd have to stay on as mayor and keep being up here for a long time in order to recognize everybody that was essentially a shining star last week, but we will figure out something. If you have any suggestions or recommendations, please send them to me. We will find a way to acknowledge everybody for the, the good things that they did. So 6.0, unfinished business, we don't have any. 7.0, new business. 7.1, discussion and possible selection of a website photo contest winner. Mayor and City Council, uh, there were three photo entries for the month of January. I like entry number two. I can't help it. The flip-flops and snowballs is cracking me up. I have a motion for entry number two. Do I have a second? Fails for a lack of second. Do I have another motion? This is the easiest part of our job, folks. Pick a picture. <laughs> all right, we're not going to have a website photo contest winner this month. Can you give one to all three entrants, please? Give them some sort of prize. Thank you. 7.2, discussion and approval of a request regarding the City of Lampasa special events for 2021. Good evening, Mayor Council. The list in your packet are the planned special events for 2021. Uh, we work very closely with the organizers and with these events throughout for years now. And so we're seeking approval, a motion for approval to continue to work with these organizations to provide them with uh, traffic safety, security, and also uh, necessary equipment that they may need, cones, tape, things like that. I make a motion to approve this. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Appears to be unanimous. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Item 7.3, discuss, discuss and consider, renew and update the contracts between the City of Lampasas and the Brazos River Authority for 1,000 acre feet, which would allow, excuse me, which would now be BRA system water availability agreement. Mayor and Council, we actually have, I believe, three contracts with BRA in addition to some water rights that we still retain on Sulphur Creek that we actually amended in 2013 uh, so that we had more latitude for their use. Uh, it's, this has just come up for renewal. We would recommend that you approve this uh, contract and uh, for the extension period through uh, 2050. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimous. Item 7.4, discuss and consider installing partitions to dais. Mayor. 
Mayor and Council, this item was discussed during workshop, and I'm just asking if you want to consider us to pursue options, or at this time, table it, or cancel it, or not go forward with it. Do I have a motion from Council to move forward with obtaining bids for partitions for the dais? Item fails like. Okay, thanks. 7.5, discussion of possible action regarding an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Lampasas, Texas, amending Ordinance 1540, which adopted the 2017 City of Lampasas Personnel Policies Manual, Sections 4.0, Types of Employment, section, Subsection 4.02, concerning introductory period for promoted and or transferred employees, amending Section 5.0, Employee Compensation and Advancement, Subsection 5.08, concerning longevity pay for employees with 25 to 29 years of service and employees with 30 or more years of service. Amending Section 8.0, Leave Time, Subsection 8.03, concerning the use of accrued vacation leave. Subsection 8.04, concerning the use of accrued sick leave. Amending Section 10.0, Health and Safety, Subsection 10.04, Point oh four concerning the use of the accrued leave to be used to supplement workers' compensation for on-the-job injuries, repealing conflicting ordinances and or city policies, including a severability clause and establishing an effective date. Make a motion to approve the first reading. Second. Mr. And a second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. It is unanimous. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do second. I have a second for Ms. For Ms. Keeney, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you all. Be safe going home.